Elevation Nation. You ready for some fortitude? I'm ready for some fortitude. Let's get some fortitude going. You guys may have heard, I've been reading a book called The Defining Decade. Um, it's incredible. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend reading it um, for folks in their 20s, even in their teens, in their 30s. It's a great book all about your 20s, which makes sense that I liked it because that's what Parker and I are obsessed about and talking about. I just turned 28 the other day. And so reading this book has been really impactful for me. And I wanted to bring up a section to talk and debate it with Parker because there's a lot in that book that will probably turn into F15 episodes. So this is the first of many. But it's one that I know hit home for both of us. And within the book, they are talking to you know a young overachiever. She had just graduated from college and gotten into broadcast journalism, went and worked as a producer, and was essentially a glorified assistant at her first role, getting coffee, doing a lot of bitch work. And I remember in this book her saying, you know, I didn't feel like I had it. She kept making mistakes. She kept not doing things right. She got yelled at by her boss. She was stressed and anxious to go in every single day because she was scared of what would happen, how she would mess up, the inevitable struggles that she would go through. And she thought, maybe I'm just not cut out for this business. Maybe I don't have it. She went in and she asked her boss, do I have it? Do I have the it factor to be good at being in TV production? And the boss replied, no, you don't but you could. And I think, you know, that's just the quick anecdote from the book. I'm interested to hear a little bit, Parker, about your perspective, but I know we both felt that. You have a story that you like to tell about being at the top, bottom of the totem pole and being at the bottom rung of the ladder. You go from graduating as a senior in college, an overachieving senior, may I add, Parker running businesses on the sides, being super involved in his fraternity, getting great grades, we both got great jobs at this company. And then all of a sudden, we don't know how to do well. And that's scary and really tough on your self-esteem and confidence. Parker, I know you went through this, right, when you first started? I, I think every person in some way goes through it. Because your the way you think about your achievements changes dramatically when you graduate college like in college there's a lot of uh things that come to an end right that are finite right so you get to the end of the semester you look back you look at a report card or your grades like oh wow i did it i did well or i did not well, do well right you if you're involved in organizations you look back and you're like what did we achieve in this time that we were doing things together uh all your extracurriculars like in college there's a lot of those moments where you're looking back was it good? Was it not? And then you get to the real world and it becomes a lot less infrequent. A lot less frequent. Sorry, not infrequent. A lot less frequent. And so that is the reality of the situation. I think for young people, it was really, really challenging. Um, it, it can be really challenging. And for me, it was very challenging in particular when, you know, to your point of that story, when I was sitting in that room with that partner. And he was asking me like the most basic questions and I realized, wow, I am really just not, <laughs> I don't see myself succeeding here at all. Right. And that was really difficult to get over at that time. But then life happens and you continue to push and you can continue to put yourself in really difficult, uncomfortable situations because naturally most of them become uncomfortable because you've never been there. And then you begin to get comfortable with how the real world works. And now, Sam, you're 28 years old. I'm 27 years old. We've been doing this for five years now. I'm sure your perspective about these things have changed. And the idea of, to your point, the it factor has certainly changed too. Like what is it? When you were 23, Is the definition is probably changed a lot yeah i mean absolutely but i think it depends on the industry right you know we're in like a normal business world i don't think people really care if they have the it factor or not i don't know you can disagree with me but like an it factor for consulting like i guess some people just get it 
But I think it more comes from when people are truly chasing some of their big dreams, right? Whether that's being an athlete or a musician or in some sort of creative world where it's, I guess, a little bit more reliant on this unknown star factor, this it factor that people are looking for. But I think bringing it back to kind of the main point of why I brought this up was for a lot of young people, it's the first time in their lives that they're not given only positive feedback. You know, in, in schools today, uh, ish. I don't know. Ish. I, I, re- I think a lot of people have really easy paths and not getting constructive criticism. Well, I think thing like when you look at your gray and you realize, oh shit, I got a seventy three. That is uh, pretty objective feedback. But shit. nothing happens. That's just. But you, I see what you your point. You're saying excuse of like, oh, I didn't study. That's why I did better. You're saying beyond your parents, someone who's literally giving you feedback about how you're doing something is what you're saying. That is constructive. It doesn't well, need I'm to be just... negative. It's just hey. I think you you got you you are working like this, and here are ways that you can improve, and here's what you have been lacking in. It's to your point, right? Well, I think it attacks you know tests attack your test taking abilities, whereas whatever job you're in is probably hopefully a path you want to excel at for the next couple of years and climb your way up. It's not like you studied for a test and they're saying you got to retake it or you have to study harder. When you get criticism, it's like almost an attack on your character, right? When I do business. And I'm doing consulting. These are my interpersonal skills, my communication skills, my organization skills, and my people skills, right? And that's who makes me me. So if I do a poor job, I take that to heart. It's not like, oh, you aren't good at taking this test or you're not good at developing pricing plans or your slide work isn't great. Those are little like test things in my mind that can be improved. It's when people come after your actual character and skill sets. But that's how you get better. Um, but I think that takes a lot of time. And I think to your point, Parker, many, many young people really struggle with this concept of coming out into the real world and comparing themselves to where they want to be, which is a blessing and a curse, right? If you're only comparing yourselves to people who have years of experience and your bosses and in positions that you want to get to, you'll certainly know how to get there, which is great. But you have to realize that no offense, School didn't teach you probably much. You have to learn a lot of this stuff on the job, in the job, meeting with people, networking, building that career, and that just takes time. It it certainly takes time. I mean, it takes what they say a career to be able to do that. It takes years and years and years. You don't just like we. I, I, the problem is right now too is you like look at people on social media and they look like an overnight success and be like, why can't I do that? I put in the time, I put in the work. Why why not me? Right to your point. Um, but I mean, this comes back to what we're trying to spread with elevation nation, the idea of mental fortitude and the idea of knowing who you are, what you want and what fuels you understanding those three things really, really well, I think helps you become more refined in how you spend your day and essentially give you that it factor that people will notice you people will help you get to where you want to go because you have that defined you showing up to things with the mental fortitude to speak up in meetings to give your opinion on things because you know more about yourself than you did before um and to your point the it factor comes from I think, in a sense, a little bit of that confidence that you have that people see within you, right? Um, but the hard part is, man, is you have to humble yourself and realize, and when we've had these thoughts and conversations many, many times, it, it just takes time, man. It really does. Um, you got to show the main up. main thing that young people don't have, patience. Well, I mean... I guess, right? Like we we make a generalization that young people don't have patience, but yeah, we we know that young I think people in general like we go towards our desires and we avoid conflict and pain. That's just hum- innately in humans and we're in a world today where instant gratification is at our in our palm. Like whenever we need it, we get it. Yeah. When in reality 
we look at the people who really have had success. They've worked on their craft for years and years and years, and you can never underestimate the time and the effort that is needed to do those things, right? Like we're on episode 259 right now. Like that we we could post 259 one second episodes and be at episode 259, but we know that that's not the case. We'd have had to put time and effort in to do an hour episode every week and a 15 minute episode every week. And that's time. No one's taken that away from us. And we've had to put that time and effort in. And do I say looking back three years ago when we first started this thing? Yeah, we're, I think we're a little bit more elevated, but, um, in that moment that we made that decision that we're going to do this, the accountability was everything, everything dude, because we knew it was going to take time. It takes 10,000 hours to master something. <laughs> I don't think we're anything near close to 10,000. I, I was thinking about this the other day, like the 10,000 hour rule with the podcast. If we've done, let's say hypothetically, this is 259, half the episodes are an hour long. So that's 60 minutes, 60 minutes times, let's see, uh, like one. Yeah, we're nowhere close. 180. Let's say 180. Oh, wait, no, that's totally not right math. Okay, let's say 130 times 60. So that's 7,800. Minutes, not hours. Yeah, we're not. We're <laughs> and not then close. you add the fortitude and fifteen. Okay, let's say we're at ten thousand minutes. We are not anywhere close to ten thousand hours. Sounds like we got some more work to do. That's okay. Just to start, and we feel you feel yourself getting more confident over time, like as you evolve and develop. You get a little more confident. So have some grace. You're not going to be good at anything right away, and that's okay. Okay, so back to the original question for the episode today. What defines the it factor? In 30 seconds, Sam, what, what do you think? And I'll give my point. I don't think that was the theme of this episode at all. What do you mean? That's not what, that's not what I was talking about. Then what were you talking about? I'm talking about the fact that young people feel like they can come into the real world and be as successful as they used to be when that's just not the case. The it factor was just a small story that I added on there. Ah, okay. So to answer that's what, what this is really about, that's what that section is really about in the book. It's how young people have, uh, you know, misconstrued notions of them going in and everyone being like, oh my God, this new hire has all the best ideas and does things incredibly. And that's just mm. not the case. So that's my summary. And I think the main lesson to take away is that you're not going to be awesome right off the bat. But what you can make up for for your lack of knowledge is your energy, your willingness to ask questions, and your ability to bring fresh new perspectives and ideas that are outside of the box. So lean in on those until you do have time to build up that knowledge. So you're saying it's the humbling reality of the real world that yeah. a lot of us have to face. And Certainly. Ooh, man, that is a topic that we can continue to talk about because the real world has humbled all of us every day in, 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 in uniquely different ways, too. Always does. All right, elevator shout-outs. Elevator number 80, my girl, the host of Seeing Other People, the co-founder of Get Set Up, Alana Dunn. Seeing Other People was just featured in the New York Times. Yeah, that's pretty cool. As a hot podcast to watch. Damn. Dating podcast, seeing other people featured in New York Times, one of the top modern dating podcasts. Pretty incredible. Two and a half years she's been on this journey. We started our journeys around similar times. She's been such an incredible friend and mentor on our podcasting journey, and we're so proud of you for getting the recognition you deserve. Congrats, Alana. That's pretty cool. That's that's Super like cool. Very, very cool. All right. I got Elevator 77, AJ Eckstein. Uh, AJ and I went on a run the other day, and it was it was just super cool to catch up with another elevator in person. That is where the true elevation happens, when elevators come together 
AJ is absolutely crushing it. He's a consultant. He is building his course on LinkedIn. He's growing. It has tens of thousands of people who are, are subscribed to it. He's now writing and sharing his story on LinkedIn uh, all around the final round. He's speaking publicly around the country. He's got so many things he's working on. He did mention that he worked like 14-hour days, which I don't necessarily believe in. However, my dude is just making his impact known and continuing to push himself way outside of his comfort zone. Um, so I just want to say to Elevation Nation, AJ is an amazing guy, but look out for what AJ is about to do because he's just really getting started. Elevation Nation, until next week, peace. AJ's so tall. Is AJ 6'6"? Yeah.